Hello, everyone. So this is episode five of the Geeks and Barbells podcast. I am a little bit high on caffeine, which is, for anyone who knows me, very unusual. This may come as a shock to many people, but I have actually only drank coffee for the first time about five months ago. And I'm, I'm turning 32 in a month, actually. So I am a rarity a rare breed. I worked at a cafe for two years and bullshitted my way through informing people about coffee, having never tasted it and hated the smell. And I still don't like the smell and don't like the taste. Um, but when I was in Vietnam, for anyone who's been to Vietnam, they have a huge coffee culture, huge, huge, huge. And they've got some specialties like egg coffee, coconut milk coffee, uh, and I've heard a lot over the last couple of years for anyone who's sort of following the health sphere. So you hear a lot about concepts like bulletproof coffee or butter coffee. And the, the general concept behind that is that, uh, I don't know the science well enough, but caffeine can pass through the blood brain barrier relatively easily comparatively to a lot of other things. Because obviously your brain protects itself from things entering it. <laughs> uh, and so it allows fat to piggyback off of it and enter into the brain better. So you get more of like a stable hit of the caffeine. It doesn't whack you in the same way. And at the same time, you get a more uh, longer duration feeling of like general focus because the fat is being utilized. I'm sure there's better science and better ways of explaining it. I'm doing pretty terrible. That being said, when I was in Vietnam, I decided to try out a coconut milk coffee. And uh, I'd have to say since then, over the last six months, I've drank maybe eight cups, nine cups. I don't want to, like my sleep is still relatively fractured. I have issues in that that I'm working through. So I, I definitely don't want to start having a caffeine addiction or a caffeine fix that, that I, I utilize. <clears throat> and so, uh, yeah. When I drink coffee, it hits me pretty damn hard. I tried to do it only with coconut milk, even over here in Bali. I just tried, it was, ugh, it was pretty terrible. But it was a small cup, so I kind of worked my way through it. When coconut milk, like a thick chunk of coconut milk is on the top, and I can sort of sip coffee through it, it tastes pretty good. But when it's like this, where it's just mixed in a little bit, now I don't know how you coffee people do it. Maybe if I kept drinking coffee, I develop a taste. And of course, there's different coffee beans and quality and how things are, are roasted and all that stuff. So who knows? I've had some, some pretty decent ones. Yes. So back to the matter at hand. For those who are just tuning in here at the Geeks and Barbells podcast, we are sort of meandering, or meandering, 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 wandering, our way through general concepts of creativity, the creative life, and really how as a whole human being, a full human being, you need a lot of different aspects to yourself to be fulfilled. We all have that creative side. And when I talk creativity, I talk about the physical, the mental, and the emotional. So there are emotional ways of expressing yourself creatively. That's within relationships, within um, friendships, family. Uh, there are intellectual ways of expressing creativity that could be work at a grocery store it doesn't really matter uh all the way up until the normal things we sort of associate with creativity which is art music and those kinds of things uh and then the physical side which of course we associate sort of with art as well depending on what it is so sort of things like dance but then there's physical training there's power lifting there's it doesn't matter what it is whatever you uh, decide to focus on is what's most important. The general concept is that we need a strong body, a strong mind, and a strong emotional base to create a foundation that we can build off of so that we can be better citizens, better humans. I don't want to say citizens because I'm really not a nationalistic or patriotic person. So we'll say better human beings uh, because if we want to give as much as possible within our life, and I don't mean taking care of the whole world because I think that concept is kind of bullshit. But being able to be a better person within your community that you're living in because the best things that start... Uh, well, brain fart. Caffeine doesn't always work. The best ways we can change 
big picture scenarios is by start, starting in the small case. So if you start being a better individual uh, to your friends, to the strangers you meet, to the people at the grocery store, that, that chains off. And then if you have more energy and you build yourself up and you have more presence within your community, well, then you can start making more grassroots movements happening. And when people see, let's say, in a place where, whatever, 20,000 people live, you get this thing going, well, then it can be transplanted into a bigger format. Uh, whereas if you just try to do something in big picture, many times that fails. Uh, so, yeah, better human being, of course, just for yourself so you live a good life. So today I wanted to talk about social media and I really want to highlight and focus on that because many people when they talk about the negativities of let's say the online life so whether it's on a laptop or we'll talk more specifically about your phone because many people when they take in social media and when they take in a lot of most things online these days many people are doing it through their phone and what are the pros what are the cons now again I'm not an expert I'm talking more general generalities that's how I'm going to be talking about a lot of things because first of all we're all individuals we're all very very different the same thing does not affect each person in the same way although there are some generalities that do kind of apply to everybody because the science is pretty strong on this so it really depends on how you want to view it how you want to take it but when we are talking about social media so not you using your phone a lot for going onto the internet or whatever watching Netflix whatever it is that you're spending your time on your phone when we are just talking about social media so when I talk about social media we'll say things like YouTube Facebook Instagram Twitter you could even say dating apps if you want to if you're on those things a lot uh, any of the kind of media which you have to be tuning in constantly at least in the sense that they pull you in in that way and what are the pros what are the cons I think the pros are very small so I'm gonna go through those first but I do I do want to be kind to it social media can have huge beneficial effects sometimes they're extreme such as like Twitter being used in Egypt to deal with like the riots and and all those kinds of things happening in regards to uh, when governments and dictatorships and people are trying to communicate. So sometimes these things can be pretty bitty, pretty bitty, pretty bitty amazing. Uh, but for many people, especially, I'm going to hyper-focus because this has been my general experience. When I talk about Western culture, so Europe, Canada, United States, Australia, and then we'll say more westernized cultures, so I've been traveling through Asia for the last almost a year now. And in many instances, when you're in the main, main cities, even though culturally there's huge differences, many things have been westernized, taken over. And so when people are ingesting information from the Internet, they are getting it through the social media platforms like we do through YouTube, through Instagram, except maybe China. That's another story. Uh, so what are the pros the pros obviously like I said you have the extreme versions but then there's just the normal benefits so there's been pretty big booms in entrepreneurship in the ability for people to just start off their own little businesses or freelance so they can use social media platforms writers poets you know there are people who in the past might never have been published but now have pretty big followings on Instagram and it translates to book sales for their poetry books so there's a lot of benefit benefits to the small artist or just small business person who just wants to focus on their own kind of thing and maybe money is not such a huge issue that they, they don't want to make tens of thousands of dollars but now they're actually able to make a living just doing the thing they love and that's because of social media and of course other aspects of the internet but social media helps a lot to get your information out there to get your product out there <clears throat> excuse me for my throat so that is a pretty cool pro I mean there's obviously connection and communication being able to find like-minded communities there's some pretty amazing when we're talking about I mean when you look at social media that was the whole point it was being able to connect people from different parts of the world different parts of your own country who would never have possibly met before but now they can when talking about things they like things they enjoy 
Okay, so I use Instagram only. I don't have Twitter. I don't have Facebook. I don't have any other social media except for Instagram and you know YouTube. Um, and so I, I kind of focus. And Instagram can be pretty cool. You know, I'm only just starting to sphere. I'm only just starting to try to build up followers. Although I, I try not to make that my central focus. I just put out stuff that I like <clears throat> and my own work. But it can be a really cool sphere. Like I pretty much 99% only follow poets and artists on Instagram. And there are some people I never would have found. And they give me ideas for my own writing and just pleasure just pure pleasure in my own life. Uh, being able to see these little joys, these little delightful things that people do is cool. And pretty much, I, I think for me, one of my biggest focuses in life and finding meaning in life is being able to find stuff and people who are cool, who make life interesting. Because uh, life is pretty scary. It is. It's, it's a scary place. There's a lot of death. There's a lot of violence. And not all of it coming from us. Obviously, nature is a, is a chaotic force. And so being able to turn life into this cool sphere that can kind of allow you to enjoy many things uh, and not have to worry about getting killed by a tornado is fun. So pros, social media, communication, connection, business, that kind of stuff. Now, what are, what are the negatives? Unfortunately, everything I just said can be reversed. So because people are connected, because they have the ability to communicate, but yet there is a distance, you are not face to face. Well, guess what? That removes empathy. It removes people's <laughs> we, we, we all have that frontal lobe that, that tells us, don't say this, don't say that. And that's because we see someone's face, we understand empathy, but when you disconnect, when you are just typing something on your phone, on your computer, people say horrendous things. And many times, you know, it doesn't have to be these isms that everybody are racist, sexist, this, that. Many times, it's just unhappy people. It's unhappy people who, unfortunately, don't have any outlets, they don't have friends, they don't have family, they don't they don't go to a therapist, maybe they don't have the money. And so they outlet all that grief, that anger, that rage online. And the fact that it's anonymous in many cases allows them to not have to deal with any of the emotional consequences of their actions towards the person they're writing. And so there are huge negatives in the communication department. There are communities that gather online that are very negative and at least in regards to my opinions my values and now they have a little meetup <laughs> spot and so there's some pretty terrible things that get done and when you're looking at what social media does to the younger generation even the older okay especially people who grew up in this like I was lucky 32 years old I pretty much almost made it past high school before Facebook was really a thing you know, even high-speed internet only came out when I was like 12, 13, 14. So I managed to like skate past the worst part of social media's effects on, on the youthful brain. But for the younger generation, so people like 25 and younger, many of these people went through parts of primary, their entire primary up through high school on social media. And most of the science on this shows boys are not as affected in the same way but for girls you're looking at huge spikes in depression massive spikes in depression social media as far as I'm concerned from what everything shows and just from what you can see should not be given to boys or girls but especially to girls until they're maybe 23 24 when the brain the frontal lobe is almost fully developed it is bad for them it just simply is the whole like. Maybe if we removed the like, which I had heard Instagram was doing, now I'm not seeing it happening. If there was no concept of likes, that would improve the situation a lot. If there was, if everything was just kind of locked into a private following, I think that would be good also, at least until you're a certain age. I know this sounds extreme. People might say like, oh, that's not freedom. But the thing is, Young people, I mean adults also, but especially young people, 
our hormones have not balanced out yet and we are hardwired for dopamine addiction okay we feel something good we hit a, do a dopamine rush okay this is how people get addicted to alcohol pornography cigarettes drugs they're in an emotionally chaotic state usually when we're younger when things are all over the place you don't know what you're doing you hit a dopamine rush you feel good when you do this you feel good when you drink that especially with socialization and whatnot now you go online you have this young person, especially a girl, especially someone who's attractive, and they can get, I've seen profiles of girls who are like 16, 17, 18, 19, very, very young, who have tens of thousands, if not millions of followers, and these girls are half naked showing off their body, and they're getting likes, 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 older men, people offering them money. What do you think this is doing to the young person's brain? It is fucking them up hard. It is not healthy. It is not good. People might say it's the parent's responsibility. I think, yes, that is true. It is mainly the parent's responsibility. But the social media platforms have to take slight responsibility. You should, at the very least, have to be, I would say, 21. But if we're going to go at like the legal, legal age of adulthood in Canada, it's 18 years old. At least before you're allowed to have one of these things. You should not be allowed when you're younger. You should just not. Okay, if we don't think someone can handle alcohol, if we don't think they can handle drugs until they're 18 or 21, well, then we need to understand that you are hitting the same pathways when you're on social media. It does not make sense that a young person has tens of thousands of people. Let's face it. It's either two spheres. When you are, especially when you're a girl, if you have thousands of followers following you, it is most pro and you're not doing something like poetry or like some kind of art or something like, to that effect. If you have tens of thousands of followers, it is two kinds of people usually following you. It is other girls and women who unfortunately, because of, again, guy, especially white guy talking about this, but many girls and many other women, they look at other girls and women they feel envy, they feel jealousy, they want to look like that girl, even though they can never look like that girl because they're not that girl. And so they follow that girl specifically because they want to, like, ego boost themselves or just it's, it's a weird combination of emotions when they're following them. And so they're either complimenting that girl all the time on her looks, which is not a good thing for a young person to constantly be hearing about her looks. Always, always, always. Or they themselves are making them making themselves feel bad by just falling and going, I wish I looked like that, I wish I looked like this, which is why you have such a huge community of uh, girls and women online who use their bodies to get followers, where they train and they, they make it seem as like it's a physical health training, like nutrition kind of thing. It's bullshit. They're just attract. Maybe they worked pretty hard to get the, the shape that they have, but it's all fake. It's not good training advice. It's not good nutrition advice. It's just they're getting advertisements. They're selling products. They're, they're selling training that's bullshit, which is why you have so many girls who still think things like, I'm going to tone my arms. Bullshit. Don't tone your arms. You need to have as much muscle mass as possible and then have a low enough body fat that your arm looks defined. Okay, There's no such thing as toning exercises. This is a marketed bullshit concept that is mostly propagated by women to other women. And maybe the original woman propagating it just doesn't realize this, actually thinks what she's thinking is real, but it's all crap. Okay, So to go back, just young people in general should not be on social media. They are not mentally prepared for it they do not have the emotional stability stability they do not have the biological stability hormones are too all over the place they get hooked on dopamine okay young girls should not have a million followers and like i said it's most of those kinds of women and girls following them back or let's face it it is horny guys young and old who are following this girl and fucking jerking off to their pictures because guys are horny and like visual representations of that they like to see that and we are kind of built in to like young like basically beautiful looking girls it's built into male biology and so social media is not only negative for the girl receiving it it's negative for the boys and the men because they become hooked on these kinds of things that's why pornography is so fucking bad for men it is 
porn is bad there's not a single positive thing to pornography if you are getting kinky and you like to watch things that's okay uh, make your own with your partner <laughs> uh, but watching it in general I mean there's some kind of we could say better kinds of pornography like watching a woman on a webcam maybe it's a better I'm not gonna get down this path but <laughs> there are better kinds of pornography but in general most of it is pretty toxic for men uh, it doesn't again in the same way that social media can be pretty much more painful and disrupting to a female pornography tends to be much more disrupting to a male and so they bleed into each other women are looking for the attention men want to see that and it fucks them both and that's why you have many more problems with erectile dysfunction uh, for men and just massive communication issues between men and women especially the younger generation when they are trying to either just have a sexual relation or an actual friendship or a deeper meaningful relationship especially long term it messes everybody up so there's some definite negative downsides to social media because of the pictures and all that stuff uh, and when we're talking about just business well for me this is a personal value judgment there is a shit ton of business sort of I like I mentioned before about uh, women and guys taking advantage of people's desire to look better this kind of stuff be healthier social media just marketing crap just there's a ton of shit stuff that is sold through social media and advertisements, uh, advertisers, advertisements that take advantage of people's sometimes ignorance, sometimes just emotional fragility in the moment. <clears throat> and there's also a shit ton of wasted time. Again, this is a personal value judgment, but I believe in two separate concepts. Time is finite, so you should not waste it. Now, that being said, what is wasting to one person, what is wasting to another is different. Okay, if you want, if you love film and you want to spend a lot of time watching films, go for it. But for another person, that might mean you know film and staring at my screen. This is a waste of my time. I want to be out in nature or socialize this and that. We all have different interests. All that matters, though, is for me a personal value, is that there are many things because of social media, especially now with things like TikTok, where for me it is purely entertainment there is nothing coming out of it but it's not positive entertainment it is distraction entertainment it's like gaming I love games Candy Crush is a waste of your time and people do that where they cannot be silent anymore they can't be in their head they can't take a moment to themselves they need to constantly be distracted and that's what a lot of social media and little things do they're a distraction culture people don't want to actually have to do anything challenging so they just distract themselves with stupid videos stupid information and stupid little games and people do this constantly they will spend months where they've not read a book read an actual deep article watched an actual video of something of import it's just distraction 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 and that's because many people are stuck in school and jobs that they have extremely negative ideas about they just want to they're they've exhausted themselves because they don't actually fill themselves up with anything good they, so they just after they sit down and they distract themselves with crap and that doesn't fill the, it gives them maybe a little dopamine rush in the moment just like those photos and the likes but it doesn't actually make them feel good long term it doesn't actually output anything of, of importance for them and so their creative set is just it's dead it's down there's nothing more to it and so for those of us who are focused, who want to make ourselves feel better, okay, you can't be happy all the time. You can't always be in the state of like, ah, okay, that's not natural. That's why people, when you see them like that, it's just like, no, no. There are normal, natural, healthy dips to how we feel, but many, many people are medicating themselves with social media. They are, okay, they just sit there. Scrolling through Twitter looking for negative commentary, negative things, uh, Instagram, Facebook. People are just looking for little useless bits and memes. 
staring at pictures of people, staring at pictures of food. Instead of just going to eat or cooking something really tasty and healthy, but just stare at pictures of food and have this weird, weird relationship with food where they're not actually eating anything tasty or, or teaching themselves how to cook and make beautiful things. No, they just stare at other people, stare at other people traveling. They don't travel. They stare at other people traveling. They watch videos of other people traveling, but they don't travel. They don't put any effort into just living frugally and saving up money or building up different systems so that they can eventually go travel, do something good. No, no, no. They just stare in jealousy and envy at other people. And people do this with social media. We have this entire community of people who make money online through Instagram, through Twitter, through Facebook, where they make money off of other people's wanting to do the things those people are doing, but don't do them because they're just so depressed about their own life and they don't want to actually put in the effort and push themselves. Now, do some people have very valid reasons why they can't do stuff? Of course. But for many people, they will never put in. They won't think like, maybe I can't do this now. But if in the five years, the next five years, I do these little things and I slowly build up to it, I will be able to do it. People don't think long term like that. They don't try. Why? A lot of it is will. It's effort. It's But for many people, it's just because they take shit care of themselves internally and externally. They don't input positive reinforcements from their environment, the things they watch, the people they hang out with. They don't input good quality food. They, they don't try to take care of themselves in any way. So they go to a job, they're unhappy, they feel like garbage all the time, and then nothing ever advances. And I'm guilty of this also. I fuck up so many times. I eat shit. I don't take care of myself. I, I intake like crappy uh, media, <clears throat> and I feel like crap after. And then I, I veg. I veg until my brain just finally like re kick starts and then I try again and I go through this roller coaster. So it's not about perfection, it's not about blaming yourself, but it is about self responsibility. And for me, social media is not a good environment, generally speaking. You have to be, if you're going to be using social media, you should focus on one or two. Don't do seven. And if you're going to be on them, you should try to curate what you are intaking as much as possible. As much as possible. If you have 500 people you're following on Instagram or Facebook, there's no way to follow 500 people. And so you're just getting, and let's face it, most people are on Instagram, they're just posting redundant stuff about their life. If you actually care about someone's life, then you will want to have a small sphere of people you're following so you can actually be involved in their life. No one has time to be following 250 people. Then it's just fake. Then you just heart, 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 like, 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 like. You're not actually involved in their life. So you need to take a hard look in the mirror and tell yourself, if I genuinely care about people or this product or this service that's being offered, Am I going to be involved in it or if, am I just going to let this deluge of information just rip me every which way? And that is the major issue with social media. There's all these negative inputs coming in and there's so much of it. Tens of thousands of millions of people posting stuff on social media constantly. You can get lost. So either you remove it from your life or if you're going to use it, you have to be extremely strict with yourself who you follow what you like all these things so that you have a environment that is conducive to you feeling good okay and not just this negative pish posh mix of shit that comes out of things okay i've seen even when you're talking about being politically informed I've seen memes and photos and people posting stuff on Instagram, for example. And, you know, they'll have like a sad picture with this or that. There's no proof that that's true. If you are using Instagram or Facebook or Twitter as your information feed, you have to be intelligently thinking, where is the source of information from this person? But many people, they read something on Instagram and they take it as fact, but it is not fact. It is some random person you do not know posting a picture trying to get an emotional 
feeling out of you so that you don't think about it. You just go, oh, terrible, and that's it. And that's why we have so much social justice warriors online who don't know the truth of anything. They just go emotionally with whatever everybody else is subjectively feeling, writing shit out with no fact checking. It's terrible. Again, another negative aspect of social media. They have become areas where people go to for political information, for, for just news information about what's happening around the world. And they do not make sure that the sources of information they're taking in are actually valid. You know, you just scroll through your, not even your feed, the search feed, and because you've been liking this thing and that, that thing, now you get this deluge of information online and none of it has any validity to it in many cases. It is just people wanting you to agree with them. So they put the most emotionally like vitriolic shit that we all search for and it sticks in your head. So there are definitely some negative things that can impact your internal and external environment when you're talking about social media. And for, if you are the kind of person who wants to maximize your output, output in terms of the quality of your own life and the quality of energy that you give off to your friends and family and the people you care about and if you have a business or, or whatever it is that you're doing and you want to have this good quality community you have to curate your environment so that you are not being pulled this way and that and just being trashed and, and brought down low in terms of energy and, and fed false information so Podcasts, videos, audio formats, text, social media platforms, all these different spheres that you go to, uh, you, you really need to take a hard look and make sure that they are a curated, positive impact on your life and that they are actually, to the best of your ability, being truthful in their information. And that's about it. You just got to be careful. So for anyone first tuning in, just starting off in this kind of series. So if you like it, smash the like button down below. Subscribe if you feel like it. I uh, have an audio version, which is up on Podbean. I still have to check if it's actually being uploaded or can be uploaded to iTunes and Spotify. I'll be checking that soon. I think I need to have a certain amount of hours of content out before I'm allowed. And... That's it. Thanks for tuning in to episode five of the Geeks and Barbell podcast. I hope to see you again soon. Maybe not visually, but in my mind. Have fun, everybody. Remember to stay healthy and let your geek freak fly.